Fat Channel XT is a stock plugin which comes with Studio One. And in this case, I've got it inserted onto the main vocal track, which is sounding like this. Now, one of the great things is I can shape the sound of this vocal all in one place using all of these components. There's a high pass filter, there's a gate expander, there's a compressor, equalizer, and a limiter as well. Without having to open up lots of plugins, I've got them all at my fingertips. Now, if we look at the compressor and equalizer components of this, we can actually swap them out for some alternatives. So if I go to where it says compressor at the top and click on this down arrow here, you can see I've got a number of options available to me. For example, I could swap this standard compressor out for this LA-2A style compressor. Now, depending on how you got Studio One, whether you bought it outright or whether you got it using Sphere, some of these are available for free. Some of them are paid for components. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on the standard components, the ones that we all have. You can get a very long way indeed with these components, but it's worth understanding Understanding them all. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. One of the main advantages of a channel strip is having everything at your fingertips. Now the individual components may not have as much depth as you would have with a single plugin, but generally you do have everything you need for most tasks. That's true with Fat Channel XT, which does come with Studio One. So let's dive in and just get an overview of how it works. When you first insert Fat Channel XT, it's probably going to look something like this. We can see the high pass filter controls and the gate controls here. And if we want to use, for example, the compressor, we just click on its name at the top here and it slides into view like so. The same is true for the equalizer and we can also reveal the limiter by clicking on its name. Now, this is the default view or the default mode, but I have to say I much prefer something called the stacked mode, which is what we saw right at the beginning of this video. We can change to stack mode by clicking on this icon here, and then we can see all of the components at the same time. I much prefer this in terms of workflow when I'm using any kind of channel strip because it means that I've got all of the controls available to me at my fingertips, so to speak. And they're sort of interactive with each other, so I find that very, very handy. So that's the main thing I want to point out. Now, for the purposes of this video, however, I will be using the non-stacked view. And that's because it's just much easier to zoom in and for you to see what I'm doing with each individual component. But do bear in mind, I would recommend this stacked mode. Now, while I'm in stacked mode here, I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, this high pass filter control that we see right at the beginning here its, it's changes are reflected in the EQ at the bottom. If you look while I'm turning this dial, you can see that that's being reflected in the EQ unit at the bottom. However, for it to be effective, to actually engage the high pass filter, we don't actually have to have this equalizer switched on at all, okay? So if I put this all the way down to zero, I'm gonna play the vocal and push the high pass filter up and you'll start to hear a difference as those low frequencies get removed. Only yesterday, honey, I was there with you. Only yesterday. And as I say, you can hear that even though the equalizer is not switched on. Why is it all the way up there? Well, I think it's there because it's so common for many of us to do a high pass or a low cut um, with our mixers at the beginning of our signal chains for many, many tracks that we would be working on. So I think that's why they put it right at the top there. Not everyone does that, but for me personally, I often or almost always do a high pass um, on most of my tracks. So handy to have that there. Now, one other thing I wanna point out about these components is we can click on this button here, this sort of double arrow button, to swap the order of the compressor and the equalizer. So I click on that, and now the equalizer is first, compressor second. Now there's some debate as to which is the best way to go. Should you have your equalizer before the compressor or vice versa? My answer is, it depends. 
depends on the results you're getting and the results you want. For me personally, more often than not, I do have an EQ before a compressor, but many, many people don't do that. So it's handy that we can actually swap it there. And finally, uh, before we go on to our first main unit, I just want to point out there is a side chain option with this plugin, and I will be covering that at the end of this video. So if you already know what all of these do, and you just want to know what the, how the side chain works, I definitely recommend using the chapter feature here on YouTube, and you can skip forward to where I explain how the side chain works. So this time I've got Fat Channel XT inserted on a snare drum track, and I just want to quickly apologize in advance because this snare is going to get pretty monotonous to listen to as I demonstrate the gate expander. However, it is really useful material to demonstrate this because with this snare, we've got some really loud hits and we've got some much quieter ones. So with this all switched off, let's just have a listen to the original material. So as I say, some loud ones and some quiet ones. Now a gate is just like a real world gate. It's open or closed. When it's open, things go through, sound goes through in this case. And when it's closed, sound does not travel through. Well, kind of. Let's just use that as a basic principle, but there's some, some variations to that which we'll look at later. But essentially, we need to first decide at what level is the gate closed? At what level in terms of decibels? Okay, and we do that with the threshold control. So we can move that up and down and set that level. So let's just move that threshold control up as we listen to this snare and wait for the point where we pretty much get rid of those quieter hits. We've had to get it up pretty kind of high there. The threshold's pretty high. We, we're still hearing the odd quieter hit, and we'll get to why that is at the moment. But essentially, we've cut most of those quiet hits out. Now, it may be that we don't actually want to cut quiet things completely out, but we just want to reduce their volume. We may get a more natural result with that. And we control that with the range. The range essentially controls how much volume or signal reduction we're getting when the signal is below the threshold. I had it set to minus 84 decibels, which basically cuts it off completely. But we can, as I say, just reduce it, not cut it off. Let's just push this control up and see what happens then. Now you can hear there that most of those quiet hits are really, really quiet, but we're still getting the odd one, aren't we, which is a bit louder. Let's push that range down again. Now the reason that we're still hearing the odd quieter one, even though we've got the threshold up so high, is because of timing. Our two timing controls are attack and release. And they essentially, with attack, for example, control the rate at which the gate opens and with release, the rate at which it closes. What's happening is, is that those quieter hits, which are coming just after a loud hit, are still heard because the gate's still open because the release time is too long. So if I change that, I should start to be able to get rid of the, all of the quieter ones now. Let's try that. And there we go. Now we've got rid of all of those quieter hits and we're only hearing the loud ones. That's just a good way to demonstrate how a gate like this can work. It can be very, very useful indeed. Now we can not only just use threshold to determine when the gate opens or closes, but also frequency. And that's where this control comes in, the key filter. What I'm going to do is not solely based on how loud something is, but the frequency. So I'm going to reduce this threshold down a bit, actually. And I'm going to push this key filter up and have a listen to see what happens now.
in this case at 800 hertz i'm pretty much getting rid of most of those quieter ones it's using the threshold still but it's also using this frequency and that can just be a different way of doing things it's just going to depend on your material as to whether you use this or not if you want to hear what the gate is hearing when you're using this control then just flick on the key listen switch okay we'll do that now and i'll just move this around and you'll hear what the gate is hearing in order to determine whether it open or closes. So that may help you in terms of identify, identifying which frequencies you want to use. Now, finally, we can switch it from a gate to an expander. OK, very, very similar in usage, but you'll actually see it with the visual display over here. When we click it to expander, we'll lose the range control. Yeah. We've still got the attack and release, but you can see that it's not going to com ever completely cut anything off, which is below the threshold. OK, it's just going to make it quieter, kind of what we were like trying to do earlier on with the range control. But depending on the material and how you want to use it, you may find this a little bit easier, in fact, to use. In this case, we're mainly going to focus on that threshold. Have a listen again. So again, you know, it's often said that an expander is like the opposite of a compressor. A compressor compresses, or in other words, reduces dynamic range, whereas an expander expands dynamic range. It's another way to think about it. But in this case, in a more practical way, what we can hear is we can still hear the quieter material but it's much quieter than it was originally. Now, if you don't really understand what the controls of a compressor do, then I'm going to recommend you follow the link in the description down below or on the card that you can see in the top right at the moment to another video I made where I went through how to use the stock compressor, which comes with Studio One, because in that video, I actually explained the basic controls of which are common to many compressors. And that will give you an understanding if you watch that of how compression actually works. And rather than me repeat myself here, I think it's better that you do watch that video. Instead here, I'm just going to explain some of the little quirks that we find with this compressor with Fat Channel XT. Now, of course, we do have a threshold control here to set the point at which compression will start to happen. And we also have a ratio control to control how much compression will happen. Now, with both of these controls, we can actually change the values over here on the right hand side with the interactive graph as well. So to change the threshold, we can just grab this middle dot and to change the ratio, we can just go over to the right hand side and move that dot up and down to change the ratio. Now, of course, we also have an attack and release controls uh, over here in the middle. And we also have a key filter. Now, this changes the frequency range that the compressor is listening to. I want to stress here that it doesn't actually change the sound in terms of frequencies. We're not filtering out frequencies for the final result. But in terms of what the compressor is hearing, we are filtering them out. That makes the compressor only react to that range of frequencies frequencies. Now, in order to be helpful and hear what frequencies the compressor is hearing, we do have this key listen switch here. OK, so if we switch that on, play the track and have a listen to see what happens when it's all the way down, by the way, it's completely off. So only once I start moving it, you'll hear a change. Only yesterday, honey, I was there with you. Only yesterday. So if we wanted the compressor to kick in based upon what was happening in the low frequencies, we would have this low. And of course, for the high frequencies, the same there. OK, so do keep in mind, though, it isn't actually changing the sound and the whole frequency range is still being compressed. It's just what's triggering it. Now, we also often see something called a knee on compressors. And uh, basically, that makes the ratio happen in a bit more of a gradual way around the threshold. We don't have uh, a lot of control over the knee here, but we are able to turn a knee on. We do that with this button here, yeah, the soft button. That just turns on a soft knee. You can slightly see it happening in the graphical representation over here, but uh, we don't have fine control over it. But most of the time, you don't really need that now finally we have an auto button here and i just want to be clear about what this does because it's a little bit different to the way it behaves with the studio one stock compressor when we turn on the auto button here we 
lose the ability to change the attack and release. It's done automatically. Attack is set to 10 milliseconds and release is set to 150 milliseconds. So the EQ is a simple four band EQ and you can see the four bands here. If you click on them, that actually switches them on if you want to use the mouse like this. If you drag one of them up, then that gives a boost for that frequency range, drag it down, it reduces attenuates that frequency range we can also change the Q or the curve again using our mouse if you just use the scroll wheel on your mouse then you can actually change the Q like so there as well now if you don't want to use your mouse then you can also change those values down here with that frequency range you can either click on there and then just type in some values or again if you hover over the value here you can actually use your scroll wheel on your mouse to change that and you can do that with all of the values like so. Okay, so there's a few different ways that you can change the basic values. Now, the lowest one and the highest one, just like all of the bands here, start off by having a regular kind of a bell curve like so, but we can change them to a shelf. So again, if I look at the top one here, I'll move it up. It's currently a bell curve. I'll click on this button to the side and then that turns that into a shelf and you can see how its behavior has changed there. Now, just a word with shelves and the way that the Q changes the shelf. If we push the Q up with this shelf, I'll just make sure it's selected, sorry. Push the Q up and you could see that what happens is you get a dip just below the frequency that you've selected and you get a boost just above it, but then it sort of smooths it out, okay? That's if you're increasing the Q. If you reduce the Q, it sort of does the opposite. It smooths everything out and extends the range of that Q. You can see it's extended all the way down here in this case. So um, just a different way that the Q works when you're using a shelf on the lowest and the highest frequency bands. So as we can see, the limiter is a very simple control. We can switch it on here and then we just have a control over the threshold, essentially. If you don't really know what a limiter is, then probably the best way to understand it is to understand compression. And then you'll just understand that a limiter is an extremely aggressive um, a compressor with a very, very high, if not what sometimes described as an infinite ratio. In other words, anything that goes above a certain threshold, it's just going to keep it at that level. It's not going to allow it to go above that. So essentially here with the limiter, you just set the threshold with this control here. I have a bass guitar and some drums on my track. And in this case, I've got Fat Channel XT applied to the bass guitar. OK, and as you can see, I've set up some very basic compressor settings here. Let's just have a quick listen and have a look and you'll see that the bass is being compressed a bit. So once the bass, once the compressor hears the bass go over a particular threshold, then it actually reduces its signal. But quite often what we actually want to do is reduce the signal of an instrument like the bass according to what another instrument is doing. Very commonly, we do this with the kick of our drum. This helps the kick drum to shine through and gets the bass out of the way. It's sometimes, sometimes called ducking. Now, it's not always done with, with bass and kick. It can be done with all kinds of things, but this is just a typical example. So in this case, what we want the compressor to do is listen to the kick drum, okay, and listen for when that goes over a certain threshold, but reduce the level of the bass guitar. It's really easy to do. We go up to the top of Ch Fat Channel XT. You can see where it says Sidechain. You click on the little arrow here. That gives you a list of tracks in your current project. And for me, I'm just going to click here for, the, for a send from the kick. OK, so I just click on that button. There's another little icon has appeared there, here. This is the toggle, the pre-fader toggle. I'm going to turn that on to make sure the signal is not being affected by the fader level of my kick. OK, so if I'm mixing later on, this signal is going to stay constant. OK, so now what's going to happen when we play our track is, yes, the bass is going to be compressed, but only when the kick kicks in so to speak and i'm probably going to have to adjust the threshold to make that happen in the right spot let's give it a try
and you can see there what's happening. Now, if you're not quite sure what the compressor is hearing or you want to make sure of what the compressor is hearing, then you can use the key listen feature. If I switch that on, then what we're going to hear is just the kick drum itself. So now that we know what we're what the compressor is actually listening to, we can also use that key filter uh, uh, control over here, which we used earlier. Have a listen to that. So there we can control um, which frequency ranges of the side change source the compressor is reacting to. Again, just make sure that that's switched off so that you can again hear the bass guitar. Now, if you want to use a slightly more sophisticated EQ than the one we've seen here, then you should definitely check out this video about the latest stock EQ that comes with Studio One, Pro EQ3, which includes dynamic EQ, which is incredibly useful, and also some sidechain capabilities.